You've landed on planet 412. I'll be your captain of sorts as we make our way through this strange, paranormal, encrypted Phil world. Tonight's episode takes us far into the southwestern corner of the United States, Arizona. I'll be sharing 20 eyewitness stories of the strange and unexplained. Story 1. Greetings. I discovered your contact information online while researching recent Bigfoot sightings in Arizona. My wife and I own a small ranch just outside of Payson, nestled in the forests of the Rim Country. We have lived on this property for over 15 years and spend much of our time hiking and horseback riding in the Tonto National Forest. Just three nights ago, we were out late gathering firewood when we heard a series of deep guttural grunts emanating from the tree line approximately 150 yards away. I trained my flashlight in the direction of the noises and was shocked to see two large bipedal creatures lumbering through the forest. The larger of the two stood at least 10 feet tall with broad shoulders and a conical head covered in reddish brown hair. As the beams of light hit it, the massive creature stopped in its tracks and turned to face us. It stared directly at me for several seconds before letting out another deep grunt and taking a few aggressive steps in our direction. I was frozen in fear and awe at the sight of this beast. My wife, who had not yet noticed the creatures, asked why I was acting so strangely. I pointed wordlessly at the Bigfoot, but by then they had retreated into the darkness of the woods. We immediately returned to the house and I made sure to lock all entrances behind us. I have explored those woods extensively over the years, but have never encountered anything like what I saw that night. The sheer size and menacing presence of the larger Bigfoot was terrifying. The next morning, I returned to the location of the sighting, but could find no footprints or evidence of the creature's presence. The dry forest floor and recent rainstorms likely obscured any tracks. Nevertheless, I cannot ignore what I witnessed. I notified a local Bigfoot research organization, and they have planned an investigation of the area. I will inform you if they discover anything further. Thank you for cataloging these accounts and working to prove the existence of these elusive hairy giants. Story 2. I was out exploring the old copper mines near Superior, Arizona with a couple buddies of mine. We were poking around some of the old tunnels and abandoned shafts. Not doing anything too illegal per se, just adventure seeking. We must have been a good mile into one of the bigger tunnels when I noticed the path split off ahead. My flashlight beam couldn't penetrate very far down the side tunnel, but I was curious to see where it led. I started walking down the passage, my friends trailing behind. After a couple minutes, the tunnel opened up into a larger chamber. That's when things got weird. The room had this reddish glow to it, like emergency lights or something, but there was no visible source. I froze when I heard a deep rumbling growl come from the shadows at the back of the chamber. Out from the gloom emerged this dog-like creature, but much larger than any dog I'd ever seen. It was more the size of a lion or a bear, with reddish fur and a muscular body. Its lips were curled back, revealing huge fangs that extended past its mouth. But the most terrifying part was its eyes. They glowed blood red and were fixed on us with pure hatred. Behind the beast, I could see the remains of animals scattered around the room. Bones, fur, smears of blood on the rocky walls. The smell hit me then too, just awful, like rotting meat left out in the sun. We got out of there right quick, let me tell you. But I got curious after a few days and went back to check it out again. Stupid, I know, but I'm a curious idiot sometimes. This was in the middle of the day, though. Figured it had to be safer. I went back to that side tunnel with a hunting knife for defense, 
although against that monster it would have been useless. The glow and the smell were gone when I returned. The animal remains were still there, though, shredded apart by something extremely powerful. Never gone back since, and hope I never run into that demon dog again. Story 3 Last month, I was driving home late one evening after visiting some friends in Payson, Arizona. It was around 11 p.m., and I was on Highway 87 heading back towards Phoenix. There was hardly any traffic on the road as I drove through the Tonto National Forest. The night sky was clear and full of stars. As I came around a bend, I noticed something very strange standing in the middle of the road about 100 yards ahead of me. At first I thought it was a large bird, but as I got closer I could see it was a tall, humanoid figure with huge wings folded behind its back. Even with my headlights on it, the creature seemed to blend into the darkness like a living shadow. I slowed my car, completely transfixed by the sight before me. The creature must have stood over seven feet tall. It had long, slender limbs that appeared human-like. Its head was oval-shaped and hairless, with a flat face and black almond-shaped eyes that seemed to stare right through me. But the most striking feature was the pair of enormous bat-like wings protruding from its back. They were folded up so I couldn't gauge their full span, but each wing was as wide as the creature was tall. My heart was racing and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. As I cautiously drove closer, the humanoid spread its colossal wings slightly, as if getting ready to take flight. They had to have been 15 feet across. Panic took over me and I slammed my foot on the gas pedal, speeding past the creature. As I flew by, I saw it turn its head to watch me drive away into the darkness. I was so afraid that I just kept driving until I reached home. I didn't tell anyone about my encounter, thinking they'd never believe me. I'll never forget that towering winged figure I saw in the forest. I still get chills thinking about its piercing black eyes staring at me as I sped away. To this day, I avoid driving on that highway at night. Who knows if that creature is still lurking out there in the darkness among the trees. Story 4 I was out quail hunting with my buddy Jake in the high desert grasslands of northern Arizona back in 1992. We were working an area near Sunset Crater Volcano National Monument, pushing through the tall grass and chala cactus. My dog Ginger was leading the way nose to the ground, searching for the scent of birds. She rounded a small rise ahead of me and suddenly froze on point, tail stuck straight. As I came up behind her, an ungodly bellow echoed from the grass not ten yards in front of us. It was an earth-shaking roar unlike anything I've ever heard from man or beast. Ginger yelped and darted back behind me with her tail tucked. What in blazes was that? Jake exclaimed, shotgun at the ready. We watched in disbelief as the grass parted in multiple spots, revealing the presence of something massive. It had to be at least eight feet tall and very broad, judging by the swaying vegetation. I spotted a grayish arm as thick as a tree branch part of the blades. I think it's Sasquatch, I shouted. Let's get the hell out of here. But Jake wasn't convinced. I'm going to blast that damned monster back to kingdom come, he yelled recklessly. Just then, this towering, hairy creature stood up right in front of us. It had to be nine feet easy and was built like a grizzly bear but with more human-like features. Its eyes glowed fiery amber, and its long arms ended in huge hands that seemed illuminated from within by an orange light. Matted reddish fur covered its body from head to toe. It stared us down and unleashed another bone-chilling roar that froze us in our tracks. We were speechless, gaping in shock and fear at this impossible beast for what seemed an eternity. Finally, it turned and lopped into the pine forest flanking the grassland. 
We cautiously followed it in hopes of catching another glimpse or finding tracks. But the forest floor was dry volcanic gravel that left no trace. No sight or sound of birds or other wildlife either, as if they had fled the area. We returned to camp with the unshakable sense that we had encountered something unnatural. I still have recurring nightmares about those blazing eyes and horrible roars. But I know what I saw out there, and it was surely the legend come to life. Sasquatch. Story 5. Something strange has been happening around my property on the outskirts of Prescott, Arizona over the past few months. I live in a fairly remote area with forested hills and canyons surrounding my land. My nearest neighbor is over a mile away. Around 11 p.m. or midnight, once or twice a week, I've heard loud knocks on the doors or windows of my house. At first, I thought it was just the wind or a tree branch tapping on the glass. But the knocking continued even on still nights. It sounded like huge knuckles rapping on the doors too loud and heavy to be a person. I never went outside to investigate. The knocking put me on edge. Then one night, I heard my back door creak open. I rushed over just in time to see an enormous hairy hand and forearm filling the entire peephole. This thing was reaching inside my house. I slammed the door shut and locked it. The next morning I went to inspect my back door and discovered a large wet patch where something had urinated all over it. It reeked like a skunky wet dog. I cleaned it off, but the very next night I heard knocking again, went to check the door and found the thing had peed on my door again. This continued for weeks, no matter how much I scrubbed the area. I started chatting with my neighbor Jack about what was happening. He lives in a cabin just east of my property. Jack confirmed he'd been having similar issues on his doors and windows. Loud knocking late at night by something large and heavy-handed, followed by unusual urine stains in the mornings. We both concluded it must be a Bigfoot wandering around our forested properties. Jack says he actually spotted the creature once a huge eight-foot-tall ape-man covered in reddish-brown hair lurking behind his tool shed. He said it reeked like a skunk soaked in a stagnant cattle pond. This Bigfoot seems intent on tormenting us by knocking on our doors and windows over and over, almost like he's amusing himself by working up our dogs into a barking frenzy. And he keeps marking his territory on our houses at night. By comparing notes... Jack and I figured out this creature has a circuit of favorite areas to prowl around our remote properties under the cover of darkness. The other day I went out to my shed to grab some tools, and as I opened the creaky wooden door, I got a whiff of that same skunky manure smell lingering around some of my gear and gardening implements. It seems this Bigfoot had been poking around my sheds, touching and examining my tools and equipment almost intrigued by them. I'll admit, part of me finds this fascinating, that an unknown species of hominid is roaming the forests of Arizona, close enough that I can hear its knocks and smell its pungent odor. But another part of me is incredibly unnerved. This brute seems mostly harmless, but still, I don't want an eight-foot-tall Bigfoot wandering through my backyard while I'm asleep Story 6. I come from a long line of hunters who have roamed the forests and canyons of Arizona for generations. My grandpappy taught my daddy, who taught me. We know those woods like the back of our hands. Just last autumn, I set out before sunrise to bag me a nice buck. I was making my way along the edge of Sycamore Canyon, not far from Sunset Crater, looking for good sign. The rays of the morning sun were just peeking over the treetops when I caught a foul odor on the breeze. At first I thought it might be a skunk or dead critter, but this reek was something fierce. As I crept through the underbrush, I suddenly spied something that made my blood run cold. 
There, crouched in a clearing, was a massive, hairy creature the likes of which I'd never laid eyes on. Even hunched over it had to stand at least eight foot tall. It was covered head to toe in a coat of shaggy auburn fur. Its face was hidden, but its burly arms and stocky build left no doubt that this was one powerful beast. As I watched, paralyzed, it seemed to catch my scent. That horrendous head turned, and I saw a flash of black, soulless eyes. With a bone-chilling roar, it charged toward me on all fours. I stumbled backward, fumbling for my rifle, but my legs had turned to jelly. A shot rang out over my shoulder from my hunting buddy, who had been trailing behind me. The creature yelped as the bullet grazed its shoulder. It wheeled around and fled into the undergrowth with terrifying speed. My buddy came running up. Jeepers creepers, what in tarnation was that? He exclaimed. I could only shake my head in dismay. To this day, I have no idea what manner of beast we encountered in that lonely canyon, but it sure weren't no ordinary Arizona critter. From that day on, I started taking grandpappy's tales of haunts and haints in them woods a mite more seriously. Story 7 I'm not one to usually believe in cryptids or anything like that, but something I encountered while out there left me feeling pretty unsettled. It was a sunny afternoon, and I was doing one of my usual hikes along the Peralta Trail. The scenery was breathtaking, with the red rocks and cactus gardens stretching out under the bright blue sky. I was enjoying the peace and quiet when I heard a strange howl coming from somewhere deep in the canyons. It wasn't like any dog howl I'd heard before. It had a deeper, more guttural sound, and it sent shivers down my spine. I stopped in my tracks, listening intently for any other sound. But there was nothing. No rustling in the bushes, no barking, no movement at all. Just the eerie silence of the desert. I tried to shake off the feeling of unease, but it persisted. I continued my hike but I couldn't help but scan the surrounding landscape with a newfound vigilance. A few minutes later, I spotted something moving in the distance. It was a large, dark figure standing amongst the rocks, watching me. At first, I thought it might be a hiker, but as I got closer, I realized it was something else entirely. It was much taller than a human, with a thick, muscular build and shaggy brown fur. Its eyes were bright yellow, and they seemed to pierce right through me. I froze, unsure of what to do. The creature stared at me for a moment, then slowly turned and walked deeper into the canyon. It didn't make a sound as it moved, just a silent, unnerving presence. I stood there for a long time, trying to process what I had just seen. My mind raced with possibilities, from wild dogs to something even more fantastical. But I couldn't shake the feeling that I had encountered something truly unusual, something that didn't belong in this world. I eventually continued my hike, but the experience left a lasting impression on me. It made me question everything I thought I knew about the world and the creatures that inhabit it. I'm still not sure what I saw that day, but it was definitely something I'll never forget. Story 8 Greetings, Lon. I have an intriguing tale to share after stumbling upon one of your Facebook posts requesting stories of strange creatures. This event occurred last year while hiking through the forests of northern Arizona. My husband, our border collie named Rex and I were staying in a remote cabin we rented near Happy Jack. We set out early one crisp autumn morning to explore the surrounding woods. As we walked along a narrow trail, I paused to examine some odd prints in the dirt that didn't seem to match any local wildlife. Just then, Rex began growling menacingly at a cluster of tangled bushes adjacent from the tracks. My husband rushed over to investigate, 
and was astonished when a bizarre humanoid figure emerged. It stood about four feet tall with slick black skin, an oversized oval head, and a distended belly. However, its most unsettling feature was the absolute lack of facial features or extremities. There were no discernible eyes, nose, mouth, ears, or fingers on its amorphous form. Despite the absence of sensory organs, an intense invisible energy radiated from its core. This peculiar entity seemed acutely aware of our presence, feeling our shock and curiosity. Before we could study it further, the being pivoted and vanished behind the bush, apparently melding into the shadows. Simultaneously, the winds whipped into a frenzy, spawning a dust devil that chased Rex and I back down the path. Once we returned to the main trail, the winds died down as suddenly as they arose. We attempted revisiting the odd creature several more times, but were deterred each time by violent squalls. I immortalized the unfathomable apparition by sketching it after we returned to the cabin. The entire unnerving episode still baffles me today. I've shown the drawings to various paranormal experts, with some speculating it was an alien interdimensional being or cryptid like the Pukwudgi. Sadly, Rex passed shortly after from cancer and my husband and I have since moved to Oregon. However, the inexplicable events in those Arizona woods will be seared into memory eternally. I hope my genuine account proves useful in your research into unexplained encounters. Please let me know if any further details would aid your investigation, and I will provide what I can recall. Looking forward to your thoughts on what manner of entity my beloved pup and I stumbled across in the Happy Jack forests. Story 9 Hi everyone, my family recently had a strange encounter during a winter hunting trip in the northern Arizona region near the town of Flagstaff. For those of you familiar with the area, we were hunting on private land bordered by the Coconino National Forest, specifically in the vicinity of the Schultz Pass Trailhead. We are a family of experienced hunters, and this particular trip was no different. We spent the early morning setting up our tree stands and preparing for the day's hunt. As dusk approached, my mother started looking for my stepfather, who usually picks her up at their designated stand. She saw what she thought was his silhouette walking towards her through one of the clearings created by the power line routes that run through the area. However, as he got closer, she noticed something odd. He was walking differently, with a wider gait and swinging his arms more than usual. She thought he might have simply forgotten where her stand was and was trying to find her. As she stood up and waved to get his attention, the figure dropped to all fours and darted into the woods, letting out a low growl. My mother waited for what seemed like forever, feeling terrified and bewildered. While we initially thought it may have been a trick of the fading light, my stepfather revealed something even more unsettling. He admitted that he had seen the creature as well before my mother did. He described it as being roughly six feet tall, covered in thick, coarse hair, and emitting a strong, skunk-like odor. He stated that he had drawn back an arrow to shoot, but the creature saw him and charged at him. He managed to shoot the creature in the arm, but it continued running into the forest. We are still trying to figure out what this creature could have been. While we're familiar with the wildlife in the area, nothing we've encountered before matches this description. We've considered the possibility of a large coyote, but the size and behavior seem inconsistent. We're hoping that by sharing our experience, someone might have an explanation or have had a similar encounter. If you have any information or insights, please feel free to share them in the comments below. Here are some additional details that may be helpful. The encounter occurred in December during winter time. 
The creature was seen near the Schultz Pass trailhead in the Coconino National Forest. The creature was described as being six feet tall, covered in thick, coarse hair, and emitting a skunk-like odor. It walked upright and dropped to all fours when it ran. It was injured by an arrow in the arm. We appreciate any assistance in unraveling this mystery and learning more about this unusual creature. Story 10, I'm writing to share a strange experience I had just last night while driving to pick up my boyfriend from work. It's important to preface this by saying I'm not someone who easily believes in the supernatural, but what I saw has left me shaken and questioning everything I thought I knew. I was driving north on the Arizona State Route 89A around midnight. It was a pitch black drive, surrounded by the eerie silence of the desert except for the occasional coyote howl. As I rounded a bend, my headlights illuminated something unusual in the road ahead. It stood tall and bipedal, its silhouette vaguely resembling a human figure. But it wasn't human. Its legs were long and spindly, and its upper body was unusually broad and hunched. The most unsettling detail was its complete lack of hair, exposing pale, mottled skin that seemed to glow faintly in the darkness. My initial instinct was to slam on the brakes, but something held me back. I found myself frozen, staring at this creature as it turned its head towards me. Its eyes, large and luminous, seemed to pierce the darkness and lock onto my gaze. A cold chill swept through me, and I felt an overwhelming sense of fear and dread. The creature stood there for what felt like an eternity, then let out a guttural sound that sent shivers down my spine. It wasn't a growl or a roar, but something altogether different. Something that seemed to emanate from the depths of its being. Finally, the creature turned and disappeared into the thick undergrowth lining the side of the road. I sat there for a moment, unable to move, my mind racing with questions. What was that? What did I just see? The drive to my boyfriend's workplace seemed to take forever, each mile blurring into the next. When I finally arrived, I was trembling and pale, barely able to speak. I managed to blurt out something about seeing a strange creature. And thankfully, my boyfriend didn't dismiss me. He listened patiently as I recounted the entire experience, his face growing increasingly serious as my story unfolded. Since then, I've been unable to shake the feeling of being watched. Every rustle in the bushes, every flicker of light in the darkness, sends me into a state of hypervigilance. I've even contacted local wildlife experts and park rangers hoping to find some explanation for what I saw. However, no one could offer any answers, leaving me feeling more confused and frightened than ever. I'm sharing this story in the hope that someone might have a similar experience or offer some insight into what I might have encountered. I'm terrified, but also strangely intrigued by this encounter. It has forced me to confront the unknown and question the limits of our understanding of the world. Story 11. I was a Boy Scout in Arizona for several years when I was a teenager. Our troop was pretty disorganized, led by an elderly scoutmaster who was often drunk on whiskey he stashed out at camp. He'd drive us out to remote campsites and national forests around the state that were usually in poor condition from lack of use. As long as there was some kind of shelter he could hole up in alone, that was all that mattered. On one camping trip to a neglected site deep in Tonto National Forest, some strange occurrences had us all on high alert. My friend Mike and I were exploring along the shore of Roosevelt Lake when we came upon several huge, human-like footprints in the mud near a stream's outlet. They looked impossibly large, over a foot long, and had clear, definable toes. We knew about legends of Bigfoot, but had never taken them seriously 
until we saw proof with our own eyes. Later that night, after we relayed our discovery, two older scouts snuck out and had a terrifying encounter while hiking to the lake shore. They felt something massive following them between the trees, its thudding steps matching theirs. In a clearing, they glimpsed the hulking silhouette of a giant hairy ape-man among the pines, towering over eight feet tall. They fled back to camp in hysterics, insisting the beast pursued them through the woods. Our nerves already frayed from finding those tracks. Their sighting put us all on edge. In the early morning hours, I was startled awake in my tent by frightening howls nearby. Two dogs belonging to the camp's caretaker were circling our sight, clearly distressed about something lurking in the darkness. Their desperate cries raised the hair on my arms. I peered out my tent flap into the moonlit forest, but saw nothing. Still, after that scare, none of us scouts lingered long in that camp. The memories of that trip changed my attitude about legends and folklore. Maybe myths have some truth to them after all. Those footprints and that towering hairy beast will be burned into my mind forever. Story 12 It was 1998 in the Kaibab National Forest, Arizona. My buddy and I were out elk hunting and had stopped to take a break. We were sitting there when all of a sudden this guy comes running out of the brush looking terrified. He was yelling, it's coming to get me, over and over, with sheer panic in his voice. He ran right by without even glancing at us, even though we were both armed hunters. We grabbed our rifles, ready for something to come charging out after him. But nothing ever did. That guy just kept on running till he was out of sight. To this day, I've never seen someone so scared. It happened near Bright Angel Point along the North Rim. My next odd experience happened in the same general forest area at the Whitforest Trailhead near Point Imperial. I took my teenage son on an evening hike starting around 8 p.m. I've hiked that trail at night before. It takes about an hour and 15 minutes to make it to our campsite. But only 10 minutes in, these birds suddenly swarm us out of nowhere. Seemed they got spooked by our lights or something. Anyway, a few minutes later, I realize we're way off the path. Somehow stumbled 50 feet into the woods without realizing it. Weird thing is, we eventually got to the campsite at almost midnight. No idea how we lost so much time. The last incident happened after I moved to Payson, Arizona. This one really shook me up and I still can't explain it. I was on my porch talking to a friend on the phone when my dog starts barking like crazy. She only does that when something's really wrong. So as I'm still talking to my friend, I head over to see what's agitating my dog. That's when I see this huge dark figure by the trees at the edge of my property. Had to be at least eight feet tall. Living in the forest my whole life, I know bears. This wasn't a bear. It was like a solid shadow just standing there, shaped like a person. My buddy on the phone hears me say, what the hell am I looking at? And soon as I said that, this thing turns and runs to the dry creek bed by my land and disappears. I hightailed it back to the house with my dog who was barking wildly the whole time. Her fur was standing straight up never seen her so freaked before. The next day I checked for tracks out there but didn't find any. Never going in those woods again after dark, that's for sure. Story 13. I was hiking along a remote trail in the Superstition Wilderness area east of Phoenix, Arizona last weekend with my girlfriend and our friend before we even got to the wooded area, I noticed a really wide, long print in the sandy soil next to a mesquite bush that definitely wasn't human. I was able to fit both my spread out hands into the print. I called over a park ranger who was nearby to take a look. He seemed puzzled and when I asked if he had seen prints like this before, he just shrugged without responding. 
We continued on the trail into the rugged terrain. About 15 minutes in, I spotted something odd about 50 yards up the path. Due to the rise of the trail, the late afternoon sun was silhouetting this creature that at first glance appeared to be a very large coyote walking on all fours. But as we paused to observe it, the beast suddenly stood up on two hind legs. My jaw dropped as I realized it was some kind of bipedal dog creature, at least seven feet tall. It turned to look at us, rotating its coyote-like head, but much bigger. Its front limbs were very thick and muscular like a bodybuilder. The chest was super broad and its fur was darker than a regular coyote. After staring for maybe 10-15 seconds, it whirled around at shocking speed and sprinted off the trail, quickly vanishing from sight into the scrub. My girlfriend screamed and went running back down the trail along with our friend. My first instinct was to follow, but I froze, mind racing that it could easily circle behind us at that velocity. I finally began jogging after my companions. Once fear that we could get cut off overcame my paralysis. Back at the trailhead parking area, I hurriedly told the ranger what we saw, but he would not confirm or deny ever seeing something similar, even though these woods reportedly have legends. The next day, when I returned in daylight to search for that first odd print, I unfortunately couldn't relocate it I still get chills remembering that encounter with something seemingly part coyote, part human, and all terrifying beast in the superstitions near Phoenix. Story 14. I was hiking in the Superstition Mountains east of Phoenix, Arizona yesterday afternoon when I had a frightening encounter. I'm still shook up about what I saw out there. I had hiked up to the Flatiron Hiking Trail, which winds through the western part of the range. It was late afternoon, and I was planning to watch the sunset from a vista point overlooking Weaver's Needle. As I hiked along the sandy trail lined with scrub and cacti, I sensed something moving in the brush up ahead. That's when I spotted it, a tall, gangly, bipedal creature covered in dark fur with an elongated snout and a long, thick tail that tapered to a point. The tail looked just like a T-Rex's. As it walked, the tail dragged on the ground behind it. This was no ordinary animal. My heart pounding, I ducked behind a rock to observe without being seen. The creature wandered slowly through the desert foliage before stopping between two saguaro cacti about 10 feet apart. It grabbed the branches of each cactus with its long limbs and began pulling itself upwards climbing the saguaros using both its clawed hands and feet. It was shimmying up steadily and methodically. Soon it had ascended almost to the top of the 20-foot saguaros. At that point, the bizarre creature stopped moving and seemed to blend into the tops of the cacti. I watched for a while longer, but it didn't come back down. By now, the sun was going down over Weaver's Needle. I got out of there as quickly as I could, terrified by my encounter. I have no idea what manner of beast I saw yesterday, but it sure wasn't natural. I'll be sticking to well-traveled trails from now on when hiking out here. Story 15 I've never been much of a believer in things like cryptids, but after what I saw, I'm not so sure anymore. It was late afternoon and I was finishing up a solo hike on a trail I'd never taken before. The scenery was beautiful, with towering cacti and panoramic views of the city. As I rounded a bend, I noticed something unusual in the distance. There was a figure standing motionless in the shadows of a large rock formation. Initially, I thought it was another hiker, but as I got closer, I realized something was off. The figure was tall and slender, much taller than any human I'd ever seen. It was completely hairless and had pale white skin that seemed to glow faintly in the fading light. 
but what truly terrified me were its eyes. They were enormous and completely black, bulging out of their sockets like a predator. Its teeth were also unsettling, small and pointed, almost like an angler fish. Instinct took over and I froze. I didn't dare to move or make a sound. The figure continued to stand there, its black eyes fixed on me. It felt like an eternity passed, but it couldn't have been more than a few minutes. Suddenly, the figure moved. It stood up from behind the rock, revealing its full height, which seemed impossible for a human. It was hunched over, its long limbs dangling down almost to the ground. Then it began to walk towards me. Each step was slow and deliberate, and I could feel the fear rising in my chest like a wave. Just as it was about to reach me, I heard the unmistakable sound of an approaching car engine. The figure paused, its head snapping towards the sound. It looked back at me once more, and then, with a surprising burst of speed, vanished into the brush surrounding the trail. I waited for what felt like hours, my heart pounding in my ears. Finally, my husband drove up the trail, his headlights cutting through the darkness. We both saw the silhouette of the creature as it retreated into the brush, and he confirmed that what I saw was real. We reported the incident to the local park rangers, but they didn't seem to take it very seriously. They said they would investigate, but I don't have much hope that they'll find anything. I'm still trying to process what I saw. I can't shake the feeling of fear and unease that has gripped me since the encounter. I've never felt so vulnerable and alone in my life. I'm posting this here in the hope that someone might have heard of similar experiences near Papago Park or elsewhere in Arizona. I'm also hoping to connect with other people who have seen things they can't explain and find some support and understanding. Thank you for listening to my story. If you have any information or advice, please don't hesitate to reach out. Story 16. I was on my way back home to Phoenix after visiting my sister in Flagstaff. It was getting late, nearly midnight, but I wanted to get home instead of finding a motel. I was driving south on Interstate 17 through the forested areas approaching Camp Verde. There were hardly any other cars on the road. The nearly full moon peeked through the tall peony trees, creating strange shadows that played tricks on my tear at ease. I was daydreaming a bit when a shape caught my eye up ahead on the left shoulder. As I got closer, I saw it was a woman wearing an old-fashioned dress, like something from frontier days. She had on a bonnet and boots with the dress. She was just standing there staring ahead, not moving at all, even as my headlights washed over her. I slowed way down as I passed, not sure what to make of it. This far out, it seemed mighty strange for someone to be walking along the interstate dressed like that in the middle of the night. I looked back in my mirror after I drove by and there was no sign of her, just the dark road behind me. I drove on for a couple miles with the hair standing up on my neck, keeping watch for any other odd sights. About ten minutes later, I saw the exit for Camp Verde and pulled off to get some coffee and ponder just what I might have seen back there. Story 17 So I recently went to visit my family down in Tucson, Arizona. They had just moved there from Seattle and were living in this adorable little cabin nestled in the foothills. I was excited to see them, of course, and also to escape the city for a bit. It was everything I imagined the desert to be, hot, dry, and with these amazing sunsets that painted the sky with every color imaginable. But as the days went by, things started to feel a bit off. I couldn't shake this feeling like I was being watched, even when I was alone. Then, strange things started happening doors would slam shut on their own, objects would move when no one was around, 
and I swear I heard whispers coming from empty rooms. It got especially bad at night. The wind would howl like a banshee, and I'd hear these weird sounds, guttural growls, voices that didn't belong to anyone, and things scratching at the walls. I couldn't sleep, and my dreams were filled with this terrifying figure that kept shifting and changing form. One night, I woke up to the sound of something clawing at my window. It was pitch black, but I could make out the silhouette of this tall, skeletal figure with these burning red eyes. It just stared at me, its claws scraping against the glass. I screamed, but it didn't even flinch. That's when my parents woke up. We all huddled together in the living room, scared out of our minds. The scratching continued, along with this chanting that seemed to come from inside the walls. We were stuck, trapped in a cabin with something, something we couldn't even comprehend. When the sun finally came up, the chanting and scratching stopped. The air was thick with this weird energy, and we were all just a mess. We couldn't explain what happened, and it freaked us out. The next day, we went to see this local elder, who everyone said knew everything about the desert. She listened to our story and just nodded, like she'd heard it all before. She talked about these ancient spirits that roamed the land, and how they could get restless and angry. She said we needed to do a cleansing ritual to appease them. So, we did what she said. We burnt sage, said prayers, and just tried to make things right. And you know what? It worked. The cabin felt different, lighter, somehow. All that tension just lifted. We left the cabin a few days later, still shaken up by what happened, but we also carried a sense of peace knowing that we had done what we needed to do. The desert's hold on us hasn't faded, though. We still think about that cabin and the unknown entity that we encountered there. It's a reminder of the mysteries that surround us, of the things we don't understand. And honestly, that's kind of exciting. Story 18 It was a hot summer day, and I was heading down the Peralta Trail when I spotted something unusual in the distance. It was a humanoid figure, standing perfectly still amidst the desert scrub. The first thing that struck me was its pale color. It was almost white, like a ghost, and stood out starkly against the brown and green vegetation. As I got closer, I could see that it was taller than a person standing at least seven or eight feet tall. Its body was thin and lanky, with long arms that hung down almost to its knees. I couldn't make out any details of its face as it was turned away from me. I felt a wave of fear wash over me as I stood there, frozen in place. I wanted to turn and run, but something about this creature held me captive. After a few seconds, it slowly turned its head and looked directly at me. Its eyes were black and empty, and they seemed to pierce right through me. The encounter lasted for what felt like an eternity, but it was probably only a few seconds. Then, as quickly as it appeared, the creature turned and walked away into the desert. I watched it go, my heart pounding in my chest. I didn't move until it was completely out of sight. I've spent a lot of time outdoors, but I've never seen anything like this before. I've read about similar sightings in the area, but I always dismiss them as folklore. Now I'm not so sure. I'm not sure what I saw that day. Was it a real creature? Or was it just a trick of the light or my imagination? I don't know and I may never know. But one thing is for sure, I'll never forget that encounter. I'm curious to hear if anyone else has had similar experiences in the Superstition Mountains or elsewhere. Story 19, I grew up in the shadow of the Dragoon Mountains, Arizona. My family lived off the land, hunting and fishing to put food on the table. 
As a kid, I spent countless hours exploring the foothills. My eyes always peeled for signs of life. A deer grazing in a clearing, a hawk soaring overhead, even the occasional rattlesnake slithering across the dusty trail. One November morning when I was about 15, my father and I decided to head out for a mule deer hunt. We set up camp near the ghost town of Gleason, a place rumored to be haunted by the spirits of miners who died in a cave in years ago. Now I'm not one to put much stock in ghost stories, but there was something about that place that sent shivers down my spine. We split up, Dad heading east and me going north along the creek bed. I walked for hours, the sun beating down mercilessly. I started to think I'd wasted my time when I heard a strange sound, a rhythmic thumping, like a drum beat echoing through the canyon. Curiosity gnawed at me. I followed the sound deeper and deeper into the canyon until I stumbled upon a clearing bathed in golden sunlight. And that's when I saw it. The creature was enormous, easily taller than any man, its body covered in thick, matted fur that blended with the desert sand. It had a massive head with horns that curved upwards like a crown, and eyes that seemed to glow with an inner fire. My heart hammered against my ribs. This wasn't any deer or bear. This was something different something ancient and wild. The creature turned its head towards me, its eyes boring into mine. I felt a primal fear I'd never known before, a fear that made my legs weak and my breath shallow. With a low growl that vibrated through my bones, the creature took a step forward. And that's when I ran. I ran like I'd never run before, the creature's pounding hooves echoing behind me. I didn't stop until I stumbled into camp, my lungs burning and my legs shaking. My father, ever the stoic, just nodded when I told him what I'd seen. He knew the stories of the creatures that lurked in the mountains, creatures that most folks considered mere folklore. But I knew what I saw. I never spoke of it again, not even to my closest friends. It became my secret burden, a reminder of the day I encountered the shadow on the mountainside. Story 20. It was a hot summer night in the deserts near Phoenix. Jack and his friend Mike decided to go camping for the weekend to get away from the city. They drove out to the Superstition Mountains and set up their tent in a remote area near some rock formations, surrounded by cacti and scrubby bushes. After getting a campfire going, they were sitting around talking and having some beers when they suddenly heard an eerie, unnatural-sounding howl echo through the mountains. The sound seemed to come from very close by, perhaps just on the other side of some large boulders nearby. Jack felt his heartbeat quicken. Could it be a coyote or even worse? One of the legendary beasts said to roam these parts, according to native legends. Mike nervously scanned the darkness with his flashlight, but the beam only illuminated more rocks and shrubs. Did you see that? Mike whispered, voice shaking slightly. I thought I saw something moving behind those bushes. Jack peered into the night. Was that a pair of animal eyes reflecting back at them? He realized they had left some leftover hot dogs out by the campfire. Let's get this food put away and get inside the tent where it's safe, Jack said, trying to hide his growing fear. They quickly cleaned up their sight and put out the fire, then retreated into their tent, zipping up the door flap. They huddled inside, hoping that whatever was lurking in the desert would leave them alone but neither one could shake the creeping feeling that something was still out there in the darkness, watching. Jack and Mike sat huddled in their tent, straining their ears for any sound beside the usual desert night noises. The flap of wings from a passing bat made them both jump. I think we're just spooking ourselves, Jack said, trying to keep his voice steady. 
There's nothing out there but coyotes and snakes looking for food. I don't know, man. That howl sounded pretty strange, Mike replied. And I definitely saw something by those bushes. As if on cue, they heard large footsteps crunching on the gravel right outside their tent. The steps were far too heavy to be a coyote. Jack's heart leaped into his throat as the steps paused by the entrance to their tent. The silhouette of a large, bulky creature with pointed ears was visible, backlit by their dying campfire. A guttural snuffling came from just outside the tent flap. Something was smelling and exploring their campsite. Mike let out an involuntary whimper of fear, then clapped his hand over his mouth. But it was too late. The snuffling stopped, replaced by an ominous low growl. Suddenly, the creature slammed itself against the side of their flimsy tent, bellowing aggressively. The tent buckled violently under the impact and Jack and Mike screamed in terror, clinging to each other with white knuckles. It battered the tent again and let out a roar that sounded like a demon from the pits of hell. Then, the heavy footsteps moved away at a quick pace, the sounds fading into the desert night almost as quickly as they had come. Jack and Mike stayed frozen in place, shaking with adrenaline. Neither would sleep a wink that night as they awaited the dawn, terrified that the beast might return. As the first dim light of dawn crept over the eastern horizon, Jack finally worked up the nerve to unzip the tent flap and peer outside. The campsite looked undisturbed except for some large, unfamiliar tracks pressed into the dirt by the dying campfire. Mike huddled at the back of the tent, eyes wide with fear as Jack confirmed that whatever had attacked them in the night had departed. It's gone, at least for now, Jack panted, out of breath with relief as much as lingering panic. Mike crawled out of the tent as well to survey the tracks himself, confirming they belonged to no ordinary desert predator, but possibly the cryptid beasts that roam the superstitions according to legend. As Mike started packing up camp with trembling hands, neither of them spoke of spending another night in these haunted mountains. They stowed their gear as quickly as possible, constantly checking over their shoulders. Both nearly jumped out of their boots when their radio suddenly crackled to life. Having turned on automatically from the morning timer they had set the night before. The bubbly pop song playing a stark contrast to their brush with the unknown mere hours ago. It somehow made the whole ordeal seem even more bizarre and unreal, except for the very real proof pressed into the dirt at their feet. As soon as the truck was loaded, they peeled out of camp towards pavement and civilization once more. We are never going camping out here again, Mike declared firmly, finally regaining some color to his pallid face after putting several miles between them at the winding mountain roads that had delivered them into their night of terror. Jack nodded in fervent agreement. He glanced back just once through the rearview mirror, half expecting to see red eyes glaring after them from the shadowy hills looming behind. But nothing stirred except blowing dust, the mountains and their secrets erasing all traces of the horrific events of the past night as if they had never occurred at all. If you've made it this far, you're a champion. I appreciate you. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for Planet 412, as there will be so much more chilling tales to tell all of you. Stay safe, and good night.